8.2 focuses on multiples of fractions, and all this does is build off of what we just talked about in 8.1, which was multiples of unit fractions. So let's take a look. We've talked about multiples before, and multiples are just like skip counting. So if we started with a whole number, let's say we were looking for our multiples of 4, we would skip count by 4. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. And when we're doing this, we need to think about multiplication. How I got this 4 right here was just 4 times 1. 8, 4 times 2. 12, 4 times 3. 4 times 4, and so on and so forth. Okay, let's take a look at what it means when we're finding our multiples of fractions. So let's say we're starting with a fraction. Let's start with 2 fifths. And we want to find the multiples of 2 fifths. Let's say we're looking for the next 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, we're going to do the same sort of thing. We're going to skip count. And the only thing that's going to change is our numerator. So 2 fifths would change to 4 fifths. Then 6 fifths. I'm skip counting by 2. 8 fifths. 10 fifths. And 12 fifths. But just like we did with our um, multiples above, we need to think about multiplication. What does this mean? I just showed all these multiples, but how did I get there? Yes, I skip counted, but using multiplication, what does this mean? Well, in order to get to 2 fifths, I multiplied 1 times 2 fifths. When I got to 4 fifths, I multiplied 2 times 2 fifths. When I got to 6 fifths, I multiplied 3 times 2 fifths. When I got to 8 fifths, I did 4 times 2 fifths. 10 fifths? 5 times 2 fifths, and then to 12 fifths, I multiplied 6 times 2 fifths. Here's why that's important. We're introducing to you how we're multiplying a fraction times a whole number. See, you already did it with listing your multiples, and you just didn't even know it. When we're multiplying a whole number times a fraction, let's say we have the problem 3 times I don't know, let's say 3 fourths. All we're doing is taking our whole number and multiplying it times our numerator. Our denominator stays the same. So if we multiplied 4 times 3 fourths, our product or our answer would be 9 fourths. Now here's why this works. When we look at a whole number, like the whole number 3, it really has a denominator of 1. 3 over 1 is the same as 3 wholes, which is what this 3 represents. Now, when we multiply that times our fraction, 3 fourths, when we multiply fractions, we multiply across. 3 times 3 equals 9, 1 times 4 equals 4. That's why we can take our whole number here and multiply it times our numerator of our fraction and get the same product. Now why is this important? Why would I ever need to know this? Well, let's say you're baking and you need for your recipe two thirds cup of chocolate chips. Let's say you're making chocolate chip cookies. And that's for one batch, but you're making it for a big party and you need three batches of chocolate chips. Well, this two thirds cup measuring cup, you can't find that very often. So instead, all you're gonna be able to use is a one third measuring cup. Well, how many one third measuring cups of chocolate chips are you gonna put into your batter? You don't wanna have too few, that would be some sad chocolate chips. And you don't wanna have too many or they're not gonna cook the right way. And remember, you're making three batches of chocolate chip cookies. Well, our first step would be for us to multiply our whole number times our fraction. And when we do this, we get six thirds as our answer, as our product. Well, what does this mean? How many one thirds am I gonna need? That's where our lesson previously came into play. We're going to take 6 thirds, this product that we just got through multiplication, and we're going to turn it into 
an answer with a whole number times our unit fraction. So we're going to take 6 thirds and we're going to change that so that we have 6 times our unit fraction of 1 third. This lets us know, oh, I just need 6 scoops of my chocolate chips in order for me to have enough, but not too many and not too few, for those chocolate chip cookies. Okay, So we took our whole number of 3, multiplied it times our numerator of 2, and we got 6. 3 times 2 equals 6. Our denominator stayed the same. Then we took our product of five or six thirds and we turned it into an equation where we were multiplying our whole number times our unit fraction. Let's look at one more like that. Let's say we are, I don't know, we're making pizza. Miss Ike likes to eat food. So we're making some pizza and we need lots of flour for this pizza dough, just like we made our pizza in class. When we're making this pizza, when I made it for the whole class, I needed to make four batches of this pizza. And I needed three-fourths cup of water for each batch. And I was making four batches of this pizza. Now, measuring cups don't come in three-fourths. They come in a half cup or a fourth a cup. We're going to focus on the fourth cup because that's what our denominator shows us. Okay, so we're going to start by multiplying our whole number times our fraction, and when we do this, we get 12 fourths. We take 4 times 3, and that gives us 12. Now, let's take this fraction, and let's turn it into an answer with a whole number times a unit fraction. 12 fourths is equal to 12 times our unit fraction of 1 fourth. And that's it. That's as simple as it is. Now the last thing I really want to focus on for this lesson is that multiples piece. So let's take a look at the hot problem in your book. It asks us, are 6 tenths and 6 thirtieths multiples of 3 tenths? Explain. Well, what do you think? When we talked about our multiples, we were skip counting. But what was the part of our fraction that was changing? Was the whole thing changing? The only thing that was changing when we were listing our multiples for our fractions was our numerator. And that was it. So we had 3 tenths, 6 tenths, 9 tenths, 12 tenths. But notice how our denominator stays the same. So are 6 tenths and 30 or 6 thirtieths multiples of 3 tenths? Our answer would be no. 6 tenths is a multiple of 3 tenths, but 30 or 6 thirtieths, sorry. 6 thirtieths is not. And the reason why is our denominator does not change when we're taking a fraction and finding its multiples. Remember, 3 tenths is like 1 times 3 tenths. 6 tenths, 2 times 3 tenths. 9 tenths would be 3 times 3 tenths. And then 12 tenths would be 4 times 3 tenths. If we were to take these fractions and write them as um, rewrite them so that we had the product of a whole number times a fraction, we would rewrite 3 tenths as 3 times 1 tenth. We would rewrite 6 tenths as 6 times 1 tenth. We would rewrite 9 tenths as 9 times 1 tenth. And we would rewrite 12 tenths as 12 times one-tenths. That's all for our lesson today. Stay tuned for 8.3.